Good evening and welcome to African Voices Platform. I'm your host, Shiwe Chihana. And tonight I'll be talking to Danae Wellington from Nayara Acts. Good evening, Danae, and welcome to African Voices Platform. Uh, hi, Chie. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for bringing me your beautiful smile today. I've actually missed you, so I'm quite privileged to see you today. No, I feel the same. It's, I feel like it's going to be like a sister-sister catch-up as well. <laughs> Which it, had be. <laughs> it had better be. So we haven't seen each other in quite a while and you've gone on and done lots of things. One of those big things that you've actually gone on to do is what we're going to be talking about today. It's the documentary you've produced for in tribute to the Windrush generation. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, and this is this is an Ayara Arts project. Uh, obviously, you've been supported from from the community. We know you. You, you are Danae, and and we we just love to see the growth. But can you tell people who Danae is? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> from so, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am first and foremost when it comes to identity, Jamaican British. I have to state that, um, but I am a writer, um, a musician-ish, um, and a singer and poet as well. And then um, I am also the artistic director of Nayara School of Art, amongst many other people. Amongst many, like you're one of the most talented young people I know. I know our paths crossed through your poetry, for me at least, and then a plethora of everything that you do just flood ensued since then. You're just an amazing poet. Um, have you put a lot of that work on hold? What's happening with your poetry at the moment? Um, my poetry at the moment is kind of on hold, um, but there is an event with the amazing uh, Desiree Reynolds and Wardy Yassin, Sheffield's Poet Laureate, and Celia Sibanda on the 30th of this month, where we're going to be in conversation, kind of responding to poems about G from Jean Bin to Breathe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of propelled me into writing again and exploring poetry again. Um, but that was on hold before, before that event. <laughs> So is this, is this part of Off the Shelf Festival that, that Desiree curated? Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it is. So Desiree's curated a brilliant program um, yeah. for Black women, um, which you all should check out. There should be lots of um, events coming up that she's curated as well. Um, but yeah, that is part of the program. Great, great stuff. So apart from your poetry, you I mean, I know you've done some theatre, you, you, you're engaged in so many arts, but... You birthed Nayara Arts. What's the story of Nayara? <laughs> um, that's interesting. <laughs> um, I think in terms of the story of Nayara, it came out of, I think, a need before anything, before it actually manifested itself into something. It came out of a need to want to teach and to want to create a space such as like a Saturday school, for example, for mm. you know Caribbeans, for Black people, for Black children, for Black families. Um, and it was really, for me, a spiritual thing. Um, I felt like God kept putting it on my heart, like, I want you to build a school. I want you to do something in the community. Um, and then uh, a couple of years later, um, it was Vicky Morris from High South Yorkshire um, that gathered a group of young people together. Sile Sabanda included, Wardy Yassin, wow. Dominic Tesla. This is amazing, amazing poets. If you haven't checked them out in Sheffield in South Yorkshire, do that. Hive South Yorkshire. I love them. Love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Vicky, um, being the incredible woman that she is, she asked us um, what kind of programs we would like to put on. Um, and I thought, do you know what, to actually bring the community together, a big thing for me is actually bringing the arts and the, and creativity to communities that aren't usually afforded those opportunities at Burn Group, Pitt, Moore, Firth Park. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it'd be great to do a cinema project there. Um, and then we worked in, in, uh, in partnership with uh, Cinema for All, Burn Group Library, House South Yorkshire to put on a three-day cinema project. Um, yeah, at Burn Grove Library, and it kind of it bloomed from there, really. I think it just speaks of the spirit of Danae. I, I don't know anything you've touched artistically that hasn't just moved me, so I imagine that's what you're taking to the community. Really impressive. Well done, actually, on that. So a few years later, here we are. We're talking 
Windrush, and there have been politics around finances in, in Sheffield on, on, on Windrush monies. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that before we actually get to how you got to this particular project? This is Black History Month, so we want to give tribute to, to, to Black History Month, but we also want to talk about the politics of funding. Uh, I think it's important to talk about that. Um, to be honest, I think this all kind of came about from the misallocation of funds rightly to the Caribbean community, to the Windrush community. So mm -hmm. when this funding was given to a white organization, mm -hmm. obviously there's going to be uproar. And I think there is a history of extraction of not having meaningful relationships with the communities that we're wanting to mine, you know, we're wanting to get stories from. So I think as soon as that came out and this is where the funds have gotten, um, a group of artists and some incredible artists flagged that up and quite rightly so, um, yeah. to make sure, uh, to hold the council accountable um, and to hold this organization accountable. I think there is a history of misallocation of funds in Sheffield. And I think a lot of the black organizations here don't really get the opportunity to create the programs or to create the work that they so rightly deserve to create um, mm -hmm. because these funds are being diverted otherwise. Um, and to other places, to the common, to the common group of people that usually get it. Um, so when they called out this particular um, organization, yeah. there was lots of meetings, lots of different things going on. Um, and eventually it got to the point where um, we put in a proposal and we were successful with that proposal. Um, yeah. Congratulations. No, really, lots of congratulations. I, I mean, I'm, I'm personally glad that you, you Nayara Arts got that funding. I think it's a very well deserved space that need, that it needs to go to. Um, I have to state as well for, 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 for disclosure that African Voices Platform was one of those organizations that actually challenged um, this allocation of funds because we thought it deserved to go, especially to a Caribbean organ uh, oriented organization because this was Windrush money. So congratulations on that. So now we are on track. Uh, this funding port, so your organization is the one that was allocated this funding port after the, the bid, the, 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 the money went out uh, for bids. So uh, yeah, and you thought of an amazing, amazing, amazing venture to work on for Windrush. Could you talk us through that? Um, yes, yeah, so the project itself is a documentary film um, about the Windrush um, about the Windrush generation, but also their legacy and how they've impacted the cult structures in Sheffield. Um, and I think that it, the film itself, even before it came about, even before we had the opportunity, um, there is a beloved community member that I love, who's like a mentor and auntie, Beverly Bennett. Um, she, I call her the walking history book because she knows so much about Sheffield and everything, you know, all the community hubs and cultural spaces that used to happen in this space. Mm -hmm. And one thing we touched on was the lack of celebration and the lack of cultural spaces that now exist. So in all the conversations I had with her and it was like, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, this, this film makes sense. And yeah, <laughs> um, from there, uh, we put the idea together to not just base it around the Windrush generation and when they came and the racial tensions that happened because we hear these narratives over and over again. But what we actually need to remember is that there is joy in that, there is celebration in that. And if we can be the, the, the catalyst or the proprietors of, of reminding people that there is joy and there is celebration, then yeah. why not do that? Um, there was so much here that happened in Sheffield um, culturally for the Caribbean community. And I think the film for us feels like um, a revival in a way. Right. Um, <laughs> almost bringing that back or, or wanting to spark that, that, that celebration or that revival, yeah. culture and celebration again. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. So, I mean, that's, that's just brilliant. Um, and yes, Beverly is just like an amazing fountain of knowledge. Uh, so you, 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 you've been working with some amazing people. And so this project is actually a film, like you were saying, and what's it called and when is it out? So Passing the Baton, the film is called Passing the Baton, The Legacy of the Windrush Pioneers. Um, and it is out on the 1st of November. Um, the official premiere will be at Theatre Delhi um, on Monday the 1st from 6pm to 9pm. Um, yeah, so people can come and see for the first time there, but we do plan on taking it on tour as well. 
Um, oh my god, it's going on tour too. That's exciting. That, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. So what, what what's in who 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 help who else did you work with? Who did the casting, the directing? What sort of music should we are we expecting any music? Is it local <laughs> talent? I'm just so excited and curious. What should we expect? <laughs> um, so you should expect on the day itself, you should expect music. Uh, you should expect poetry from community members as well and a beloved special guest artist that I can't wait for people to see, um, which we're going to be announcing soon. But in the actual film, we've gathered together local community members um, across a range of different ages, kind of first and second generation Caribbean. Some that were born in the Windrush era, some that were um, born after some that were born in England, some that were yeah. born in Jamaica um, and other places around the Caribbean as well. Like the whole diaspora Caribbean community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just distracting and taking up the space. Look at you. <laughs> I yeah, love and that. The filmmaker <laughs> is, um, uh, yeah, a great friend of mine and a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant creative is Paris North. Um, mm. He directed and shot the film. Um, and it was supported by Director Zeets and YNG Productions as well. Um, they're all very brilliant young creatives and you guys should definitely look out for them because they're, okay. they're doing incredible work. <laughs> oh, we're excited. We're definitely going to be looking out and I'm sure the audience is, 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 is probably sitting on the edge of their seats now. You've, you've gotten us all excited. Um, and, 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 and who's who... Is there any sort of uh, film that's already out there that I can look at and say, ah, so that's the sort of style that this film is going to be? I've seen a bit of a snippet of the trailer. That was very exciting, but I'm curious about just the the tempo, I think, if you will. Um, what would I say? I think this is where the director would be great to have. <laughs> um, but I say one thing that we took um, inspiration from, there's a brilliant film called In Our Mother's Garden. Mm -hmm. um, which is on Netflix, which you can watch. And we took a lot of inspiration from that in terms of the flow, in terms of it being quite poetic as well and quite artistic. We really wanted us all being creatives. We wanted this, this really beautiful aesthetic as well. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted it to be raw. Um, and as I mentioned, poetic as well. So I think um, In Our Mother's Gardens is a great, um, Reference. A, a great documentary to watch. Yeah, in terms of what you can and can't, ex yeah, what you can expect. Um, and I'm trying to think of, of what else. I think that's that's kind of the main documentary that we watch to kind of gain our inspiration. Yeah, it's very personal. So this is me just immersing myself in this one. How many poets are on there? How many poems are on this? Um, <laughs> there's actually self indulgent me i'm self indulgent <laughs> <laughs> there is a couple of poems um yeah there's a couple of poems in there um and then we've got the amazing peggy who kind of recites her memories paulette brown but we call her miss peggy who kind of recites her memories of being back home and you know some of the memories of, of fruit trees and her grandma's stories of a nancy the spider you know, which a lot of Caribbeans would go to. In fact, a lot of Africans would go to as a lot of West Africans. And that's to describe that in troublemaking yeah. ways. Um, so yeah, uh, there's recitation from uh, Miss Paulette as well. So you can expect that in there and a lot of poetic shots as well. As in Paulette, Paulette Edwards? No, her name is Paulette Brown. We call her Miss Paulette Brown. <laughs> Paulette Brown. Great, great stuff. So... I, I mean, amongst the images, imagery that you've teased out, I've also seen Fra um, Franz Vaughan from KOG and the, uh, the Bongo Brigade. Okay. Does it have anything to do with this? Yes. Yeah, so we interviewed him as well because um, he actually came over from Jamaica um, to England. So we kind of go back to his memories of being in Jamaica and then coming over here and what that experience was like. Because one thing that is so common in these stories is that there's a thread of, what you leave behind to what you come to. And even though time has passed, the story sounds so similar, pretty much the same thing, the cold, you know, <laughs> and the lack of vibrancy, the lack of sun, um, and having to integrate and build, you know, again over here. Um, so there's music and a little bit of spitting from, uh, from, from friends. Um, I think we hear a little certain certain from Tixie Bang as well. Um, and even Beverly Bennett, she kind of 
she serenades us <laughs> um, in the documentary. Can you move forward the 1st of November? Like, can you just squeeze it into October somewhere so I can just come? <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that. I can't wait. Um, Danae, I think you've touched on something very important that we, 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 we tend to, to not do much of, especially the diaspora community, African diaspora being inclusive, African, African, Caribbean community, diaspora community. When we're telling our stories, especially on struggle, uh, the, the happy elements, I think, tend to elude us because other people have told our stories in a miserable way as well all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, you you say this this is actually also just showing some joys, this, this particular film. Yeah. Why was that important? And, and how I feel like that's a bold step to take and I'm really proud of you for that. Thank you. Um, I think it's really important because we, one, are not a monolith. We're not just reduced to our trauma and our pain and our struggle. We are whole beings that experience joy in these range of emotions just like everyone else does. Um, and I think when it comes to representation, and black people, especially in places like England and America, what we see are these slave, these slave narratives, mm -hmm. these narratives of pain, this constant rhetoric. And it, I think it erases our humanity. And that's not what we want because people live with memories of joy. People yeah. live with memories and connections that they've made. And in the times that we live in, we need that. You know, yeah. that's for us as a people, Mm -hmm. when it, from when it came to the slave trade, we've, we've, we've innovated so many different ways as a people to survive. And joy has always been a part of that. Yeah. And I feel like in some ways, that's, that's our resistance. Um, that's our reclamation of Recla our humanity. Yeah, I was just going to say resistance and reclamation of our identity, who we are, taking ownership of the space. Like taking ownership of the space that has been in, inhabited by, by narratives that just erase us or reduce us. It's very reductionist. I, I think that's very powerful, Danae. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's really <laughs> Not Yeah, I, I, I cannot wait. So do we have, what's the uptake been like? Do we have a lot of young people as well from the uh, uh, African Caribbean community that's going, that are showing up for this? I think this is something that they need to see. These are the experiences they need to hear. This is, the, this is, this is talent that's from, from artists and, and creators from the community. Are they coming? How, how is the uptake basically? Um, so we're pushing it as much as we can. We're hoping that a lot of the younger community does come out for it as well, because the conversations that we have is also about bridging that gap between the older and the younger um, and bringing that wisdom and that now uh, that young, fresh, you know, yeah. energy from young people together so that we can rebuild again. So we're really trying to reach as much young people as we possibly can. Um, so yeah, I, I, I pray that there is a lot of uptake. We've got a lot of elders, a lot of first, second generation, you know, the kids coming. Um, but I think it will be a very mixed night. That's my hope anyway, by the grace of God. That's my it hope. It will be. It has to be. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the venue, by the way. Uh, so Theatre Delhi has recently had a, a, black, a, a black artist director. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we've seen a lot more, a lot more of activity as well that in, it's, it's very inclusive. So it's not just the, uh, the mainstream British population, but we're also seeing a lot more of activity from the African and African Caribbean community taking place there. And this is the art that we are going to be showcasing, I believe, on, on, on the 1st of November. So well done to you, <laughs> well done you. Um, what about, uh, I was going to ask you as well about, um, about, is there any element of academia? Did we get any academics involved in this project? Um, because I know recently, very recently in Sheffield, there's been a lot of archival uh, history uh, being un unearthed for, for, for black people here. Are there any academics being involved in this particular project at all? Um, there isn't, no. Uh, who we did get involved um, was SACMA. Um, to speak on the mental health, so uh, the Sheffield African Caribbean Mental Health Association and David Busu to speak on the mental health aspect okay. um, yeah. when it comes to Caribbeans and the survival, yeah. um, but also that disconnection as well. Um, and then we got Lloyd Samuels, um, who is a big figurehead when it comes to youth work, um, 
and championing young people across Sheffield. Um, I would have loved to have had academics involved, but given the time frame that we had, I mean, we produced this in probably just over a month. Um, so a lot of the things that we wanted to do, um, we didn't actually get to do. It changed the process a lot. But what I want is for this to be um, a long-term project so it doesn't just stop here. Oh, that's what I was hoping to hear. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, tell me more. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, um, so that we actually go into and, and bring in academia and bridge academia with the arts. Um, that's something that's really important. And myself being in university as well, um, I'm studying history and sociology. So I guess the academic side comes in from that and as much other academics as I, as I can involve in the process. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no, that sounds all right. That sounds okay. It, it sounds like you've got a plan for that. But maybe maybe they do have a space of their own where they do so much of their own. So maybe this is this is your time, creatives. This is our time as creatives, maybe. This is the moment. So we can talk about history and 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 make it autistic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about the tour aspect of this? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much you've concretized on that, but you were talking about possibly taking this on tour. What, what, what do you have to hand already? Um, so there's nothing concretized at the moment. We're currently in talks with uh, the community programmer from DocFest um, about taking this on tour next year. Um, so we're, we're in the process of just kind of solidifying that. Um, I really want to take it on tour in November as well. So it's really just about nailing those venues down. Um, again, in Third Park, in Sharrow, um, where it all began for a lot of Caribbeans as well. Um, yeah. That's the main place where a lot of Caribbeans arrived in the 60s, 50s, 70s. Um, so it would be um, really an honour to take it back to that space, to that original place as well. So mm -hmm. I, will, I, will keep, I will keep you guys <laughs> updated on that. Please keep us keep us updated. I think that's that's an important element, especially with um, I mean, African Voices Platform is is very much an African diaspora show and would present content. Um, but I think what well, because we're rooted in Africa, we miss that link with our sisters and brothers from the Caribbean here in Sheffield. So that will be very enlightening for for the rest of the community that's engaged with this. Uh, and I'm sure even on the African continent, because this show actually goes goes out to the African continent mostly. So there's going to be that 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 just that synergizing of of, of information. So thank you for for giving us this gift, Danae. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's it's an honor. Um, but to be honest with you, it wouldn't have come about from people like yourselves and, you know, Desiree Reynolds and Otis and all of these incredible artists and people that champion us for us to get to this point. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, was, it, 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 was, it was the outcome of that was just brilliant to see that it's, it's Nayara who got that funding. Very well placed, very well deserved. And congratulations again. And thanks for joining us on African Voices Platform today. Thank you.